of them there. So the chickadees, just absolutely adorable little birds, very smart, very active. They bounce around in a fixture at bird feeders. People love their chickadees. And why not? I mean, they're, they're super cute. They're not bullies. They're not super aggressive and run off other birds and things like that. So we thought we would do that topic. Now, here in Missouri, we have two different species of chickadees that we that, that you can be can be found, but in the United States, really the lower 48 states, mainly five chickadees I'm going to talk about today, with two other much uh, harder to find and much more or less numerous of those chickadees. I'll cover them real briefly at the end. But here in our area, the in Kansas City, we see almost exclusively the uh, black cap chickadee. Really. I don't know if, if a, a Carolina chickadee has ever been really been documented in the Kansas City it, it proper, but if you're looking at your bird feeders right now and you see a chickadee, you rest assured that it is a black cap chickadee. And that's true for much of uh, the northern half of the United States. Let me show you. I think I've got a map here for you. Uh, okay, be nice. All right, so this is the range, range map from Cornell University for the black cap chickadee. Now, where I grew up out here in eastern North Carolina, and we could go up into the mountains of North Carolina, the really higher elevations, and we could find black cap chickadees there. But as you see, their range is really across the northern tier of the United States. And they're very widespread, um, and they are very easily attracted to your bird feeders. Um, they love uh, uh, sunflower, sunflower chips, peanuts, suet. They're very, uh, very easily attracted there. And a lot of people, like I said, they're one of their favorite birds. So. For the most part, if you live in this region and you have them coming to your, your feeders, then they're probably black cap chickadees. Now, chickadee black caps or all chickadees are cavity nesters, and they they will nest in bluebird houses. They'll nest in wren houses that have a little bit bigger rent, a hole, like a one and an eighth to a one and a quarter inch hole. Um, they they'll range in that size. Remember, birds like a hole that's just big enough for them to get into. So a bluebird house would be big, but if they're, they're you know they normally nest in in the in nature in old uh, downy woodpecker holes. But if they can find a smaller hole to squeeze into, they really do like that. They usually only have one brood a year. Now the range of size uh, of their clutch sizes is very varied. I mean, there's there's documented up to 13 eggs in one chickadee nest, but that's that's really rare. But um, usually three to four to five. Five uh, eggs in a, in a chickadee nest, and another way you can identify a chickadee nest, uh, they use a lot of moss um, in their in the base of their their nest, and also uh, dog hair, they or fur, rabbit hair, or deer hair. They'll use that in there as well. So that family of birds likes to use that, and. That when I say the family, there there is the the chickadee family. The parrots are are really widespread. There are old world. Uh, uh, chickadees, if you will, over in Europe and in Asia, they call them tits. Uh, the blue tit and the great tit and the cold tit, they have those na uh, over there. And in this country, we call them chickadees and titmice. So yes, the tufted titmouse is a cousin to the chickadees. So they, uh, they're in that same family, but they just, of course, don't have the chickadee name. They have the titmouse name. So in Missouri, we have two different species of chickadees that nest here. From the about the Lake of the Ozarks north, all, all the chickadees are the black cap chickadee, the ones that, it, it, that we have been talking about so far. If you go from about the Lake of the Ozarks region to the center of the state south, they're Carolina chickadees. Now how do you tell them apart? Well, for one thing, it, your range will help you. Up here, you, they're, like I said, they're pretty much black caps. Springfield, they're pretty much all Carolinas. It gets fuzzy right through the center of the state where they overlap because they will interbreed and their offspring can be very confusing. So according to like Mark Robbins, a, a curator of birds over at KU, he'll tell you that if you're in that part of the state and you're bird watching and you're doing bird counts in that part of the state, you, it's hard to really tell 100% if they're a black cap or a Carolina because they'll mix their songs up and their plumages will be a little bit mixed up and it's sometimes it's just better to call them a spa as we call it. In the but if you'll notice up here in the black cap, notice this lighter patch in the wings all the way down. 
And then the Carolina chickadee, it doesn't have that. It's a, a, a kind of a solid gray. This one has more brown and buff in it. Um, but their song is the key and for a lot of people. When you hear uh, the, the, their songs and calls, the song of a black cap chickadee is seesaw or you hear it's very common in your backyard, especially the spring and the breeding season. You'll hear those territorial males. The call is chickadee dee dee, chickadee dee dee. And if you hear them doing that chickadee dee call more rapidly and with extra emphasis and maybe some extra dee dee dees at the end, that's usually an alarm call. That's when they get nervous and there maybe it would be predators around. The Carolina chickadee, on the other hand, doesn't it do the see just the seesaw. He goes. Carolina is how I learned it. So for, for the black cap and for the Carolina chickadee. And the Carolina chickadee's range map, if we look at it, it is the southern bird. It is the southern chickadee all the way across the, the southern southeastern United States. Whereas that black cat was all the way across here and the Carolinas are there and we just Missouri happens to be right along that the integration line where the two meet uh, the other other parts of the country as well. So those are the two most common chickadees for probably most people who are watching these videos. Now we do have others. Now uh, they're out in the mountains uh, in the western two-thirds at the higher elevation we have the mountain chickadee and notice that white line above the eye separates the cap from the whereas the the carolina and the black cap both are solid black through here this the, the mountain chickadee has that um, that line through there and they occur in the dry uh, coniferous forest of the, of the mountains out to the west and sometimes when it comes to separating the two of uh, some of these birds, it is just habitat choices uh, for them. So uh, the mountain chickadees will come to feeders just like Carolinas and black caps. So if you're in that part of the world, that's probably the chickadee you see most often, that and the, and the black cap. Um, if you're to the north of us, if you're uh, up uh, on the oh the Canadian border and, and up into Canada, we have the boreal chickadee. Uh, this is see how where the, the cap is brown instead of black. Uh, that is, and the sides are very brownish color. Um, these are birds of the of the far north and uh, the coniferous forest of of Canada. Somebody pointed out the other day that I said Canada and the and and America North North America. I don't know. I, I said it wrong. I always say the lower 48. Yes, I know Canada is part of North America, so I don't want to insult anybody with that. That was just the tip of the slung, as they say. So the the boreal chickadee, beautiful little bird. Um, its range map is the far tier. Uh, and, and, and I know this picture I just showed you was taken right up here, right above Duluth, Minnesota. We were bird watching up there a few years ago. They also occur up in really, I've seen them in northern Maine up in this area. But for the most part, they range all the way up through into Alaska, all the way across Canada. So that, that is uh, the northern chickadee. And then the far western chickadee, this is its range map. The, the coastal line of you know, northern California all the way up to Alaska and is the chestnut-backed chickadee, a really, really pretty bird um, that usually is in the dank, kind of dark uh, woodlands of the Pacific Northwest and areas out there. But they do come to feeders, and, and especially like San Francisco and some of the big areas and, and their suburbs. Uh, they're feeder birds as well. I know whenever I was out there bird watching the first time looking for them, I was finding them you know, kind of high up in trees near the water. Just seemed to be where I found them most of the time. So you guys out that part of the world, enjoy the, the chestnut back chickadee. Now, the, there's two left that I don't have pictures of because I'm not that good of a photographer and I can't do <laughs> the The gray-headed chickadee, which is well restricted way up here in northern Alaska, very, very hard bird to get on your life list because it is, there are not many roads up there in that part of the world. So finding that. And then the Mexican chickadee, which is ranges through Mexico up into the very southern tip of Arizona, southeastern tip of Arizona. I've seen those right in the, the southern tip of Arizona down there. Uh, so those are a couple others, but we don't get those uh, uh, with much regularity. The, others, the other five, though, 
widespread, very enjoyable. People love them. They are very important insect eaters for us. They eat seed and, and suet things in the winter, but boy, they consume large amounts of little worms and, and, and insects all during the nesting season. Um, there was one account of uh, during an outbreak of a certain kind of worm out west, and that one chickadee had 267 of these little worms in its in its belly. So they uh, they had sampled. So um, they can consume large amounts of insects. So the chickadees, very popular group of birds, uh, well deserved notoriety. Um, it's a great focus for a program today. So thanks so much for the idea for that. Send in more ideas if you will. Give us a like, give us a share. If you're on YouTube, please subscribe. And until then, come on, let's talk birds.